Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video, I want to talk about the new upcoming graphics hardware from AMD, Polaris. More specifically, I wanted to talk about an article posted on Custom PC Review in regards to the positioning of the new Polaris cards, or AMD's marketing strategy with them. And another thing I want to talk about was some recently leaked information about the supposedly new 480 and 480X. So about 3 weeks ago, Nvidia unveiled their new flagship GTX 1080 and a slower GTX 1070 graphics card. I actually also made a video about that quite a while ago, so if you're interested, you can head over to my channel and watch that. So Nvidia showed off the specs and made some pretty huge claims, and it wasn't until last week where we saw reviewers review, show benchmarks, and show some real world performance of the GTX 1080. I saw some of those benchmarks, and yeah, there were some pretty impressive numbers here and there. However, with all the hype that's been surrounding Nvidia and their new flagship Pascal GPUs, a lot of people are now looking at AMD. Many people are now wondering how are they going to respond back, and most importantly, why did AMD choose to focus on a mainstream market rather than the high-end enthusiast market going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the GTX 1080 and 1070. All things considered, GPU manufacturers in the past have been known to release the flagship or high-end products first and then later on follow up with the mainstream and then low-tier performance cards. This is also the case with other consumer electronics, such as uh, Samsung with their Galaxy line of phones, and Intel with their CPUs. So then why is it that this time around, AMD has decided to do something different and not go with the usual process? Why would you try to fix something that isn't broken? Now just keep in mind that AMD will be coming out with two new GPUs in this mainstream market segment based on their upcoming Graphics Core Next 4.0 architecture codenamed Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Well one of the main reasons why I believe they decide to go with the strategy is because mainstream GPUs are responsible for the majority of GPU sales. High-end enthusiast cards will usually account for the largest profit margins, but on the other hand, the mainstream and performance segment GPUs will account for the vast majority of total graphics cards. The reason why these cards appeal so much and are popular amongst most gamers is simply because not everyone can outright buy a, a high-end graphics card for six or seven hundred dollars. Taking a look at last month's Steam hardware survey, you can see that 25% of the participating users are gaming with a mainstream or lower tier performance desktop GPU from the last three generations. And when you compare that to the users who are using high-end enthusiast hardware in the $350 to $700 range, you can see that user base just shrink down only to about 14%. Also, I want to mention that this survey didn't include laptop or notebook users which would further push the number in favor of the mainstream user base. Nvidia had released their flagship 900 series cards with the GTX 980 and 970 back in September 2014, and it wasn't until January of 2015 where they had released the much, the much cheaper GTX 960 aimed towards the mainstream market. And then finally, after 8 months, we saw the release of the GTX 950, a tier below the 960. This, is, this method of releasing various performance tier cards was also present with their 700 and 600 series cards. Now if history repeats itself, then that will indicate that there might be an expected wait time of 3 to 6 months before we see some cards from Nvidia that target the mainstream market. That means that AMD can simply compete without competition, as Nvidia is doing now with their new GTX 1080 and GTX 1070 gra high-end graphics cards. Now this will allow Team Red more than enough time to steal a considerable portion of Nvidia's significantly larger market share. Now based on that, you can definitely see as to why AMD wants to take this approach. If executed properly, they could notice some pretty rewarding gains from the GPU market. While Nvidia will be focusing on the high-end graphics market, AMD will be going after the vast majority of gamers in the mainstream market. I personally think that this is a great strategy for AMD. They have always been about delivering the best bang for your buck experience and I do believe they will hold their end of the bargain. Something else I just want to clear, also clear up was just because something is called mainstream does not necessarily mean it will have bad performance. It simply means that it will have more appealing price tag to the majority of the user base. Saying something is mainstream should be looked at independently from its performance for the most part. An example of that would be the aim would be that if AMD was to release a card with performance on par with the 390X but priced it at like 65% of the cost. Now suddenly a card which many mainstream gamers couldn't afford will be appealing to them. There was also a rumor I discussed in another one of my videos where AMD's Polaris 10 graphics card would deliver near 980 Ti performance for just $300. 
This can work quite well for AMD since most gamers and users that want to upgrade their old GPUs but don't want to wait but also simply can't afford to pay a premium because you got kids to feed or a house is mortgaged to pay or whatever the reason may be. Now they can get the both, best of both worlds experience. Now moving on to my next topic, I wanted to discuss some leaked information regarding the performance of the Polaris 10 GPU this, that was released from videocards.com. So what they provided was a table with links to the 3D Mark scores of two different chips. From the table we can see that they speculate the two chips to be called the 480 and 4080X which have 8GB of memory with a core clock of 1266MHz and a memory clock of 1925MHz followed by their scores. In the chart you can see the scores along with their other, uh, with other graphics cards. So going from the bottom to top, the slower chip scored 16,164, which places it between the 390X and GTX 970. Moving up, we see that the faster chip, C7, which is probably what they consider to be the 480X, scored 18,060, which puts it between the R9 Fiery and GTX 980. Finally, at the top, with the crossfire configura configuration of the faster chip, we see it yield a score of 25,803 which puts it between the new GTX 1080 and the Titan X. Now this leaked information hasn't been confirmed by AMD or anything, so don't get your hopes up too much and take this with a grain of salt. However, if these results do show what's in store for Polaris 10, then I must say that I can't wait until AMD unveils their new graphics card. Going back to what I said earlier in my last topic, AMD's plan is to target the mainstream, and it looks like they might do this by delivering some fantastic price-to-performance graphics cards. I have so many friends who always say that they really want some great performing graphics cards in the same price range of the mainstreams, but they simply just can't get that because they have to shell out like six, seven hundred dollars, or pay pay a really ridiculous premium to get like the performance they want to play at like higher resolutions and stuff. If the 480X is priced around $250, then that will set a great bar for price to performance ratio. Also, having two of these cards in, uh, in a crossfire configuration and almost matching the, nine, the performance of a 1080 for less would be very appealing to consumers with multi-GPU setups or who are interested in doing a multi-GPU setup. By doing so, not only will AMD appeal greatly to the mainstream audience, but they will also give many people who might even be considering a GTX 1080 to consider getting a Polaris 10 graphics card simply because the price to performance ratio is so high. You're getting an absolute bang for your buck. Another reason why this is a great sign from AMD is because this will indicate that their new Vega GPUs which are apparently supposed to replace the Fury line of cards and compete with the GTX 1080 Ti or the new Titan will deliver some amazing performance since their mainstream cards are doing so well. Now we'll just have to wait and see until AMD officially unveils their new graphics cards before we can jump to any conclusions. If you're in the market for a GTX 1070, I'd also recommend waiting and seeing what AMD comes out with before you make your decisions. Hopefully AMD can come out swinging with their new GPUs. That's what I'm really hoping for as should all of you. This will create so much more competition in the market which will lead to both manufacturers to innovate and release better products and I'll allow us to the consumers to enjoy what is produced from that competition. It's a win-win for all. Well guys, that pretty much covers what I had to say in this video. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about AMD's upcoming graphics cards and their new strategy? Leave a thumbs up if you guys found this video interesting and informative. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.